Good morning and welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View. There's lots of Celtic news to get about this morning, to get around. Obviously, we broke the news last night. Live, we asked the question. There was a lot of misinformation going around. People thought that Green Brigade had had their tickets taken away for good. Uh, we did ask the question and we got the reply back that we didn't expect, but we, we were over the moon with that, yes, the Green Brigade were back. And it was about 40 minutes after that, they put on the North Curve Twitter account that they were definitely back this weekend. In more Celtic news this morning, there is a player being called up to the Asia Cup, and it's a player that you would never have said was going to go to the Asia Cup. And never, no one had said this player was going to the Asia Cup, but he is, he has been called up. There was a meeting, uh, it wasn't a meeting, it, it was a, a Christmas get-together. A Christmas party for Celtic stakeholders, not shareholders, stakeholders. People that have got an interest in Celtic and maybe think they're a bit important. Anyway, they had a little Christmas soiree uh, on the 19th. Uh, that list was put up on Twitter last night. We'll talk about that. And the big news is, obviously, the transfer market is not far away. Celtic have made contact with Wolves for Fabio Silva. We'll talk about him towards the end of this video, but let's get to this morning's Celtic news. First of all, uh, the, the big news, the most bizarre news of this morning is a player that's only made a couple of appearances for Celtic will go to the Asia Cup. Yes, Marco Tillo. Marco Tillo has been called up, and as you can see here, he has been called up to the Australia squad for the Asia Cup. So we will lose Marco Tillo. Um, Obviously, Celtic, the Asia Cup starts, uh, the, the Asia Cup final is on the 10th of February. So it'll be interesting to see how many of the players actually make it to the, the later end of that. But either way, we're, we're going to miss players like Marco Tillo, like Marco Tillo, uh, once we come back after the break. It's, it's fantastic for him. Uh, the national boss has basically said that, look, I think, honestly, um, Marco Tillo wouldn't have come, but the fact he's got an extended uh, to 26th, players in the squad, it means it would be hard to leave Marco out. It enables us to try something completely different on the left wing. The, we the left wing? The left wing even this morning. I'm keeping that in just for the sake of it. Um, yes, he's got experience in major tournaments uh, and the Olympics in 2021, but also the World Cup. I do believe this can help his Celtic career, says the international Australian boss. So tell me what you think about that. Tell me what you think about Marco Tillo being the first Celtic player to be called up to the squad. Um, it's an interesting one, but we wish him well. We wish him well and we hope that the Australians can maybe do something over it. Now, there was a leaked picture on Twitter last night with um, a, a table arrangement, a table arrangement of people for the Executive Club Festive Lunch in the Wilfred Restaurant Tuesday the 19th of December 2023. It was a Christmas night out. It was nothing more. There's speculation that it was some kind of meeting to see how the season was going. It's a Christmas night out. When you look at the table list, they also had Brendan Rodgers and Michael Nicholson at the event. People like Willie Ohi. Um, uh, you know, it was just a Christmas night out. It was a Christmas do. That was it. That was it. It was as simple as that. There was five tables and it was a Christmas do. Nothing more, nothing more to read into it. There wasn't a strategy about what's going on this season. Complete nonsense. Yes, they probably talked about how the season has went so far and Michael Nicholson and Brendan Rodgers might have took some questions from people at the event, but it was not anything more than a Christmas jolly. So let's put the tin back in the cupboard, the biscuit tin back in the cupboards. It is not coming out. It was nothing more than a Christmas jolly, if you ask me. Now, get to the big Celtic news this morning, Baz. Uh, we broke the news last night about the Green Brigades coming back to Celtic. I think it's something that's uh, needed because I think the fans that are there just don't make as much noise as what the two fans group will. And hopefully we need to be make sure that this team gets as much motivation as we can. Because let's face it, as it stands just now, the manager has not been motivating the team to his a best of his ability. So said Chris Sutton. And he has to take some blame for the current predicament that Celtic find themselves in, having lost two games. The first time they've lost two games in December for 10 years. And um, we move on from that. There's big breaking news this morning when it comes to the Celtic transfers of the next window. Celtic have made contact with Wolves. They have made contact with the Premier League club over a striker transfer. Yes, Fabio Silva. Now, what do we know about Fabio Silva? Now, this is absolutely bonkers because they bought him for a record, club record, of £35 million as an 18-year-old. He has had his regrets about moving to 
Um, Wills, he has had his regrets. Um, he, he signed as a, a wonder kid. He did sign as a wonder kid. Now, when you look at his career, um, he's, he's actually won quite... A, he's got quite a good pedigree. you've got to say. He has won the Portuguese Championship. He has won the Portuguese Cup. He has also won the Dutch Cup winner. And he was a European Youth League winner. European Cup, a European Cup Youth League winner. And when you look at his career... He does play in the centre forward position. Uh, he can play as a second striker. So when Keogh comes back, you can play behind him. He can also play as a left winger. But the fact that his current market value is at 13 million, they're going to take a massive hit on the player that they signed for crazy money. They did loan him out as a player. When you look at him, he, he started his game off uh, at Benfica under 15s. He was then went from Benfica to Porto. He was at Porto and then he was sold to Wolves was sold to Wills. Wills then put him out to Anderlecht on loan. And he's also been at PSV Eindhoven on loan also. Uh, where by all accounts, he's, he's actually managed to score some goals, but he hasn't played a lot this season. Hence, Celtic have made contact with Wills about signing the striker. Uh, there has been a claim that Celtic have been in touch with the Premier League side regarding the forward. Silver joined Wills in the summer of twenty. 20 before embarking on a loan spell to AS, A Andalite and PSV. He's played 10 times for Wolves this season, only scoring the once in the League Cup. Brendan Rodgers is keen, obviously, to add to a striker after Marco Tillo being the first to be. Oh, I still can't believe that. I still can't believe that. Marco Tillo's going. <laughs> Oh, it must be something in the water this morning. Uh, Marco Tillo has been the first player to go to the Asia Cup. He has been called up. That will also see, um, will Kyogo Furiashi then be called up? Uh, let's face it, Kyogo Furiashi's form has not been the greatest, but it's surely better than Marco Tillo's. <laughs> Come on. And uh, let's face it, at least he's getting some game time. Kyogo Furiashi, oh, um, guys that will probably get called up along with Dyson Maida. Will Rio Hatati been called up even though he's been out injured for so long? I think the time the Asia Cup comes around, there's every chance that Rio Hatati will get called up anyway. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Celtic obviously released a statement yesterday confirming their stance over the recent European court ruling. And you've got to remember that Peter Lowell does have a seat on the board of the European Club Association. So you can understand why Peter was uh, one of the first to comment about it. Uh, personally, I think uh, it's maybe jumping the gun a bit. I think a European formatted type league is something that Celtic should be aiming for longer term to get the financial disparity down a bit with between ourselves and other European clubs. You've got to remember that this club competition was touted as a way for clubs in Europe to make more money because a lot of clubs in Europe are fed up with the way that the English Premier League is propped up by Sky Television. And other countries around Europe are not making the same money as the English Premier League. So that's what it comes down to. By the, it's, you know, it's by the by, as far as Celtic are concerned. And Peter Lowell, Peter Lowell has come out and said that Celtic are not interested. Tell me what your thoughts are about it. Are you, would you be interested in playing in a European-type league? Remember, that was only a few years ago, there was the Northern European League touted with um, clubs from the likes of Holland, Sweden, and uh, places like that to make more money. And that's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. It's going to become a, there will come a time that Celtic will outgrow the Scottish Premier League, there's come a time already when clubs in a similar position in, in small leagues around Europe are saying the exact same thing. You know, it's the way that the entertainment industry is going with football. So, Fabio Silva, the big news of this morning, Celtic have made contact with Wolves for Fabio Silva. Tell me your thoughts about and that. Is that the type of player that we need at Celtic? He hasn't had a lot of game time this season. When you look at it, he's only scored the one goal, but it's a striker that we need in. And maybe Brendan Rodgers can work his magic on the Portuguese kids. He's not a kid anymore. Uh, he's, he's not a kid anymore, that's for certain. Maybe they, we can work his magic with the Portuguese player and get him back scoring goals for Celtic and then to get us into the Champions League next season. That is all for this morning, Celtic News. The big, the big news, if you're still watching, is thank you very much to everyone who's subscribed. If you remember back to the start of this season's campaign, this start of this season, we managed to just cross over the 10,000 subscriber barrier and uh, the, the channel has grown from strength to strength until today. 
And we've got big news. We just crossed over 14,000 subscribers. So thank you to everyone. I wanted to try and hit the 15,000 before the end of December. We've hit 14,000. That's more than enough. More than enough. Make sure that you do subscribe for daily Celtic news and daily content. And on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans, all around the world. Let's